I was I was asking you what what the system is that uh, you are referring to, and I assume it's basically everything, like the software plus the people uh, who who built the system plus the people who are using the system. Is that what this this system is about? Uh, yeah. So so basically, you know, the system is not uh, um, like. Um, a standalone isolated system. So I see the system as a nested system. So both in terms of the um, the system types in most organizations, it's like a complicated um, system of uh, engineered artifacts that is software embedded within a complex um, a social system, which is you know teams and leaders and uh, even the organizational culture, right? Uh, but then where this this system, then again, bo both of these, uh, you know, the inner system of the, uh, the 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 engineered system and the outer system of the social system um, are uh, uh, open ended systems, and they they exchange inputs and outputs. But then they also have an outer system, which is you know the uh, uh, the organizations uh, or people that use the uh, products or software that is uh, generated by, by by this organization and in in the outer layer you also have the society right all these systems are like uh, permeating the, the uh, their 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 interfaces with the input and output so the uh, the resultant uh, interconnections um, is beyond the the you know the the capacity of anybody's heads and therefore any you know top down uh, intervention approach that is uh, you know um, uh, impact trying to move the system in some way has got to be supplemented with some bottom up self organizing interventions because otherwise you know it it's uh, it defeats the definition of the system's uh, multi dimensional complexity <laughs> okay so there was a remark by uh, pet zit this death i think that's how you say it uh, since you've been at DDD Europe 2023, actually you did a keynote there, um, is an emergent property a stressor in terms of residual theory? So that raises the question, first of all, what is a stressor? Then the question, what is an emergent property? And finally, what is residual theory before, before we can ask, before we can answer that question, I guess. Uh, I, I, I do wish you have invited, uh, Barry O'Reilly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, uh, um, I, th I think, uh, um, so my, my very humble take of, uh, of, uh, um, the, uh, attractor and stressor in the, in the system. Um, attractors are, you know, you can, I, I, I think of in practic pragmatic terms, Oh, this is totally. Um, mm. I think Barry would be mad at me if I simplify if I'm simplifying it this way. But it's like the momentum we can build up. Okay. So attractors in the in a system in a complicated system in in a software, it can be those governing constraints. DGD bounded contexts is an attractor. It 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 actually increases the software's understandability and right. changeability in the future, and therefore adds value to the software because it can survive the stressors, whatever that is not not, not defined yet, stressors from the environment better. Okay. That's in the engineered system. Those governing constraints are can be attractors, but governing constraints in social systems can be stressors. Um, yeah, so in social systems, uh, like in a, in an organization, uh, we, we are used to this very hierarchical form of uh, organization. And therefore, if, um, for people who, Emma brings in another framework, so sorry for that, you know, in the Kinevan framework, we, we, we tend to think about the com complex systems where humans and humans interact and humans and machines inter interact, humans and, and the outer environment interact, that, that there we need a, the enabling constraints. So, so what can be attractors in, in such a system? That is the, um, as I mentioned in the DDDEU, um, keynote, that could be the system's, um, generative adaptive capacity. Um, and so that it's, it's in the nodes of the system that these are needed. And I think Eduardo, who asked, uh, you had this comment before, was a strong proponent to enabling teams. And these days we're, we're trying actually to find out how can enabling teams, um, you know, be, be the, uh, 
basically uh, in sustaining or uh, giving the teams that generative capacity, uh, adaptive capacity, so that the attractors can be embedded within, right? So it's a skill rather than a governing constraint like a, you know, team boundary alone. That alone cannot be a tractor. It can be even a stressor. So it's contextual. So stressors of the system basically are uh, 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 things that can disturb the system's uh, uh, equilibrium um, and can push the system into a degeneration, meaning the system could be, you know, stop evolving. So okay. it maybe it's, it's, it's good enough now. It's, it's a big bank. We have been here for a very, very long time and we can sustain the momentum. We can ride the waves for, for some while. But if we stay the, it, you know, the next 10 years this way, um, we, uh, we might be, uh, you know, uh, be out of business. So, 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 uh, stressors and attractors are basically the, uh, the negative and, and, and the negative and uh, positive environmental, uh, forces and internally generated forces uh, and then the um, i cannot uh, I, I think i would refrain from uh, defining the, the the term residuality but residuality uh, I, I would just borrow barry's metaphor uh, uh, I, I won't define it uh, because i think it will be it will be a, a bit uh, um, uh, uh, presumptuous but the metaphor is like uh, taking a walk through the same landscape multiple times you take it walk the f the walk the first time through uh um it's um, uh, through a diff let's if say uh, i go to your city in in germany the first walk i take would be using my phone and then google maps and uh, i would not be make paying attention to a lot mm -hmm. of the things around me i would just be simply finding you i'm uh, and uh, but the next walk i take because i have Build some routine into finding you. I will be more mindful of of the attractors, stressors, and other factors in the system. I would be more aware of, of those things. So, so Barry's metaphor, the residuality, is is so, sort of a, a a capability or skill that you can you can build up by taking that same walk multiple times and discovering different things. I would, I would end it there because I think that's, that's the right level for me to venture into the definition. Yeah. So, so stressors and attractors, um, uh. you, you gave, I think you gave a good uh, impression about those or a good definition of those. Mm. So is an emerging property a stressor? That was the original question. So mm. what's your take on that? We should probably you should the, probably define what what or explain what an emergent property is. An emergent property, it's like uh, okay, I can start from uh, um, uh, a non-emergent property <laughs> to to contrast that. For instance, in software, right? So so in in, in engineered systems, uh, a chair I'm sitting on, uh, a, a a car, a piece of software. Uh, where you can you can say that you can design the system to be steadily and progressively move to the next state. So the system transforms output input to output in a deter in a predictable way. Um, so things are not emergent. Things are predictable and deterministic and pre-designed, and it can be foreseen. Um, but when we have emergent properties. That's when the system behavior, usually when it's involving living creatures, doesn't have to be human. It could be also a, 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 a in nature outside in, involving, you know, in the soil uh, with worms and plants and so forth. There is a self-organizing aspect in those systems. Like human beings, despite what our managers say, we have our value system, we make decisions in our own way. So, so these things, these self-organizing small, uh, uh fief fiefdoms create feedback loops that cannot be ana analytically known upfront. And therefore we call them emergent properties in the system. So, so that's why, uh, um, Russell Akoff, he says a system is more than the sum of its parts. It's the product of the interactions between parts. So a product of the relations. So uh, is, is, is the definition of system. And that's captures the, so a system has properties that none of its heart parts have, but all the parts contribute to that property and that can be emergent right so so uh so uh, uh so so stressor so a, an emergent uh, uh stressor 
can be, you know, st- well, to use the word stress, you know, if you over constrain a team, giving it a, 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 a OKRs, KPIs, things that are the team cannot be identify, uh, be identifying itself with. And, and then it, you can create this kind of uh, emergent stressors that it's like a side effect of, of taking a pill that, you know, the intervener, the person who gave you the pill never mean to 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 cause you this this uh, side effect but nevertheless you're suffering uh, from it right so so it's uh, it's that kind of thing emergent stressor <laughs> of the system as i understand okay so it might happen that because uh, the this this the system has those emergent properties and because uh, we are humans and we in in a group people intact um, in in some specific way that we might have a stressor that appears somehow that wasn't originally planned for so yes such an emergent property might be a stressor that's basically what what you're saying yeah so we we say the complex systems can only be knowable in retrospect, and meaning those feedback loops, they, they would f- form themselves in, 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 in strange and, and awkward ways. And then when we see it in retrospect, we say, ah, okay, that's what's happening. And many times we don't even see that in retrospect. That's why we say it's knowable, but there's no guarantee that those things can be known. Um, so we, it's, it's a matter of, you know, uh, probing, uh, sensing <laughs> and, and that sort of thing, but not analytically. The analytical, you know, divide and conquer approach we do with the software systems is not sufficient in this sense. So I think we've talked a lot about, uh, you know, how systems thinking is different, how it's a holistic view and how mm. uh, it, it uh, helps you to maybe understand what, what is going on in, in our projects. What I'm wondering is... Um, the, the, this is the, that's a lot of theory. So, is there anything that any concrete examples of how you yourself uh, now behave differently? Like, what what is it that you're doing differently in your work now? Because um, you know, thinking about thinking differently on. I would argue is one thing, but you know, at the end of the day, the situation should improve. So the question is, how is that useful, and how does it uh, change what you're doing in in your consulting work and in your project work? Yeah. So, um, so, so, so that uh, actually um, makes me think that uh, you know, I, I, I I'm, I think I, I shared that I'm an architect at heart, uh, and. <laughs> those structures and uh, models, right? So I feel that uh, some things that architects in the world, like me, uh, can consider is is to the architecture discipline. Uh, the next leading edge is uh, socio-technical architect and socio-technical architecture. And the tools, let's together evolve some tools and models that can help us understand this social technical reality and act in them um uh, and and uh, one of my my ddd friend uh, nick tung is is about to release a book uh, about social technical alignment called architecture mm-hmm. modernization so so there 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 are you know people uh, publishing uh, tools and exploring different tools. And that's also the space I'm exploring. So one of the things I shared at DDD Europe, which I'm going to share some uh, slightly varied example in, in OOP Konferenzen, uh, that's, uh, that's the system dynamics modeling. Um, you know, I feel that uh, with DDD and team topologies, we, we, we've come a long way in modeling the the technical and the more technical part of the team um, uh, uh, reality, but when we, so the structure, so in software, we also see, you know, there's a structural design, there's a behavioral design. So on the structural design part, we, f- I feel we, we have a lot of tools already. So some of the tools I'm, I think we can explore further is the behavioral tools to understand the social systems behavior and to evolve a language. And there, I think systems dynamics modeling, you know, feedback loops, delays and systems archetypes, and those tools can give us that language. And, uh, from I, I I really I'm I'm not a, the type that wants to convince anybody because I I think convincing is a is the wrong energy to send out to the world, but I think that can uh, expand at, to say the least our toolbox in in modeling, and and that's a start <laughs> in modeling the socio technical reality. 
Uh, and then if you're a leader, I, I don't know if there is anybody around among the audience, maybe later when listening to po podcast uh, as, uh, as leaders. So, so, uh, maybe, you know, um, that, uh, we, we, uh, to, to, um, to one of the things uh, leaders can do to actually to, to, uh, um, create a more supportive environment, uh, a psychologically safe environment to have conversations about the social system behavior because some of the things is hard it's about mm -hmm. the elephant in the room i think we all have been to you know these town hall meetings or whatever mm -hmm. you know uh, meetings where, where a higher ranking person says okay now uh, we, you can ask questions and uh, let me see if uh, there's uh, anybody who, who wants to challenge this strategy or who, whatever but you know people are just like no but how do how do i even start talking about it right um, it's like look at each other and say there is something not there is something repeating that is dysfunctional and we haven't said word on it yet and 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 it's, it's like it's like Sisyphus pushing a rock against <laughs> against the you know uphill all the time and in the end I think leaders can can really create that environment for us to have a, a to really be open about those those uh, uh, those things and 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 and, and that's supports the, the first point. I think if we don't have the second one, if we don't have that environment, the modeling in, in the first uh, thing, no, however good we're at drawing the system diagrams, we will not be able to, to make progress because we need that space to have that conversation. And that conversation is way harder than finding out bounded context. I mean, finding out bounded context is hard, you know, <laughs> assumptions and whatever, it's, it's already hard. But finding out the human dynamics and, and putting an abstraction on it and say, this is the system variable. This is another system variable. There is that causal link between them. And the relationship is inversely uh, 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 correlated. That is really, really hard because that touches the, something very vulnerable in, in our individual and team men uh, mentality, right? Uh, so, so I think that's, um, you know, for, for, for leaders, that, that's one of the things we can do. And another thing that is even more concrete is to supplement the top down analytical planning with some bottom up feedback loops. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, I, I think uh, in, 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 uh, in, in a lot of our change initiatives, it's like, okay, we, we push something out and then, um, it, it, the retrospectives. If you think about the agile world, all the retrospectives are in local teams. Uh, uh, where, why does the CEO of a company not do any uh, retrospective? I mean, it's like a, a new CEO's only job is to push new strategies. What about the three questions? What did we expect? Uh, what happened? Uh, 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 can we learn something about the gap since the last strategy was was launched, right? Uh, and, and that kind of reflective thinking is is needed in the leadership space as well. So 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 complementing the uh, analytical planning with with the more uh, uh, you know leadership retrospective and try to challenge the, the uh, fellow leaders to really look at the interventions we have uh, launched into the world and s s say uh, ask ourselves you know what happened uh, are there any repetitive forces that we can identify. And, and, and finally, I would like to say that, that the notion of mental models. So system thinking used to have this, uh, um, this model of being an iceberg, right? Uh, at, the, at the top of the tip of the iceberg, that's something you can see. And, 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 and an iceberg is like 90% underwater and mental models is at the, the, the deepest level of, of an iceberg. So it's like, um, uh, it's like the company's culture. So you can, you can push the system at the event level. All the, all the, all, all the time you want. But if you do not work with the people's, with the culture, it's like the personality for a person, a culture is for a company. Then, then, um, if we don't really like, uh, I think Peter Singji said it so well in the fifth discipline, we need to, um, really put our mental mod, suspend our mental models. It's suspend is, is literally suspending something. It's like a donkey have a, having a halter in front of our eyes, looking at it, talking about it. And that is, that's, that is something, something that is very seldomly done in big organizations. There is so much things unsaid. Just look at company meetings. Uh, what's been said? What's not said? Who is speaking? Who's not? Uh, what conversation only takes place at the Friday's bar? And, and, you know, 
know <laughs> that, mm-hmm. that 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 it's it's that kind of things. So I feel that everybody can can actually do to say we are part of the system. If we do not do anything, uh, you know, if if we see ourselves only as as outside, it's like uh, denying the fact we are seed carriers of the system, and we carry actually the mental models that pervade the system, right? So we can all do something to to change one conversation at a time, so to speak, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically that's, I, I know it's still not very concrete. It's not like, okay, do event storming, then you, <laughs> you will have system partitions, but system thinking is, is a subtle game. It's, uh, it's hard and it's non-intuitive many, many, in many, um, um, aspects. <laughs> Yeah. So, so here are the things that, that I took away from, from what you just said. Mm-hmm. So first of all, I think, um, you're not saying we shouldn't be doing, you know, team topologies and these kinds of things. Instead, no. we should supplement them. And, um, we should have a conversation about what you said the, about the emerging behaviors and, uh, about how, how the whole uh, thing, thing works, uh, which means we would need to have psychological safety. And in particular, I think you, you, touched it a little bit, but um, you said it even more clearly when we prepared uh, this episode, that uh, there are no retrospectives for things that leaders decide. While usually we in, in the Agile world, we would do a retrospective and figure out how to improve how we are working together. We don't seem to be doing that on, on the overall level or on, on, you know, on new strategic initiatives. And I think that that was, it, that was quite an interesting thought because it seems you know it seems obvious if you think about it retrospectively but you would never you know think uh, about it beforehand so that's sort of what i took away there were a few things in in the chat so first of all pat recommended that i would invite airberry O'Reilly, uh, o'reilly that you mentioned o'reilly, <laughs> o'reilly yeah. yeah um and uh, rukiani said that uh, they agree so plus 100, so they seem to agree a lot. Um, is there, and, and it seems that you, you said that a lot of the stuff that uh, we can do to improve are actually things that leaders can do. Is there anything that, you know, the average person in an organization can do to improve things or to uh Get get something out of um, systems thinking. Um, I think there are a lot. There is really a lot. Uh, like instead of just thinking that, for instance, for a team member, right? Uh, I can think of myself if I'm a developer. I can think about uh, you know I, my only responsibility is to uh, do a fantastic tech design for the requirement that comes from my my uh, product owner or whoever that is. I can try to ask some questions to understand the bigger context about the the question of the why. Yeah. So uh, I I think I have seen that when the first person starts uh, about asking the why and the context, um, that the whole, uh, the quality of the conversation actually changes from being a factory producing features than a, uh, a value driven, um, uh, uh, a team. Um, and so, so that's, that's one of the things we, we can do. And the other things is, like you said, the leadership retrospective. Another thing we can probe is, uh, what about the agile retrospective? You know, we do every week. Um, maybe one of them, instead of doing, you know, putting out, uh, uh what did we, uh, what, what can, uh, should we do more of, less of, and putting flat stickies on, on the, on it. Maybe we can just start using uh, some system dynamics modeling to 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 see how these things uh, 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 form a feedback loop in our teams. Any external uh, stressors, any internal attractors being built up, and trying to understand the social water around us, like we are fish swimming this in this water. It's very difficult to to model something like that. But if we start, you know, applying the technique in our own context. We might be making some progress also. And, and also, you know, to, to, yeah, basically, um, if we have some, uh, systemic problem in the company, then we feel that we are actually making a step toward understanding it and bringing more uh, awareness from, from our leaders uh, onto it, right? Having some impact. Um, that's, um, 
yeah, and and then keep doing DDD. So so one common thread of um, I think between uh, team topology DDD and uh, and uh, system thinking is the ubiquitous attention to language. Language is really important because we human beings we cannot mind melt like Vulcans. We we can only communicate through language, and at the systemic level, the language is gonna be super abstract. And if we don't really pay attention to the underlying assumptions, we can get mad at each other or we can talk across each other and we 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 need to f actually increase our skills in in having those conversations that balances advocacy and, and inquiry right uh, uh, not like a questioning machine but also not afraid of putting my assumptions and my vulnerability and my biases out there for the whole world to see that's really hard to do and that's uh, but but that's it, it's a decision and it's 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 sometimes a team decision if we all do this nobody nobody hurts <laughs> Yeah, so so I think that that's a very good point that actually everyone can start to uh, can start that conversation. So it's not uh, something where you should wait for the leaders in the infinite wisdom to uh, start it, but you can you can do it yourself and uh, see what what happens afterwards. Um, so I think that was a good one. Um, there is. Let me quickly see. There is one question. So. Uh, by end of end of onto zero at uh, over at Twitch, uh, and they ask: uh, So should everyone use the same language? And I guess this is oh, not about you know uh, German or English, <laughs> but uh, about you know the same expressions. Uh, obviously, uh, I think this might be a. I don't know if it's a trick question, but uh, language is always contextual, right? Uh, I mean, even software language is contextual. The, we have the you know ubiquitous language in bounded contexts. It, it, a word only has meaning. And I think in a social tech, social technical complexity that is more complex than the software space, language is even more contextual. Uh, what is efficiency? What is uh, uh, value? <laughs> what is uh, 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 what is stress? They, they mean different things in in different spaces. I think we we really uh, so language is different in different contexts. We shouldn't be using the same language, but there are patterns that go again. So the systems archetypes. It's like a, uh, I, I compare that to recurring uh, plot lines, right? You see, we all see. You know, uh, there are different uh, films having the same uh, plot lines. You know, Star Wars mm -hmm. films and love stories and uh, heroes journey uh lord of the rings a lot of a lot of the if you see a film you can see even you know by watching the first five minutes you know what kind of genre and and, and so forth the patterns underneath it can be recast with different characters and different settings that's the same with the system language the system archetype catalog is that pattern language it can help us identify some of those you know, some, some of those things underneath the iceberg. Those are the pattern catalog, just like we have a software pattern pedal catalog, CQRS and, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's very important to point out uh, that um, communication is never perfect, right? Because as you said, right, the, the Vulcans can mind melt and then there is perfect communication, but uh, we humans are limited to, you know, say something and then that might be completely misunderstood on the other side and mm. uh, that is actually one of the problems mm. i think we are facing in in projects quite a lot so so maybe people should use the same language but we can't well we can be assimilated by the borgs and so <laughs> then we uh, <laughs> the same language <laughs> yeah yeah maybe that's that's uh, that's the solution uh getting such such a hive mind okay um Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for all the the interesting uh, insights, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to your talk at, at OP. It's going to be on Wednesday, if I remember correctly. And um, it's the last day, yeah. Yeah, on on the last day, uh, and uh, hope to see you again. Uh, the rest of us on uh, next week on Friday, and um, have a great weekend. So thanks a lot, and thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for for joining.